Hey guys and welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about urban gardening and homesteading in the suburbs. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you the four goals that every gardener should have for their garden, as well as the five things that make those goals possible. Let's go. All right, so goal number one, a lizard scared me. I'm a gardener and a lizard scared me. All right. Anyway, so the first goal, watching for lizards here, um, the first goal is to grow a percentage of your own food. Now, I say a percentage, I don't say all of it, because every gardener, every you know person is gonna be different, and where you are at your stage in your garden is going to be different. For me, my goal is to grow 100% of all my own vegetables and all my own herbs. For you, that could be different, that could be 25%, that could be 50%. It could be to grow 100% of your own herbs and maybe a little bit of your own vegetables, but I think that that's a really important goal um, for every gardener because you don't wanna just have a garden that's not producing, right? You don't wanna have a garden that doesn't actually get you anything. If you are spending hours dedicating um, your time to this garden, you want it to give back. So in each one of these boxes, there's a type of food um, that I can realistically put on my table, right? Um, some of them have herbs, some of them have, like this one over here, you see beans. Um, there's arugula, which I use for myself and my chicken, um, which for me, I have chicken, so I feed the chicken from the garden sometimes. And then I have other things like loofah, um, which you can actually eat. You can see it um, growing up the side of the window here. It needs to be trellised badly. Um, it's also trying to sprawl over to that window over there. Um, so I'll be trellising that shortly, but I mean, this you can dry it for, you know, like for bath sponges or you can eat it when it's small like cucumbers. But every single one of these boxes here, I mean, I'm growing herbs, I'm growing peppers, I'm growing tomatoes, I'm growing things that you can eat. And for me, that's my goal in my garden, to grow 100% of my own food. I really honed in on that goal this year um, by growing things like eggplant over there, peppers over here. Um, you can even see some some of the red peppers down here. I mean, but I really wanted to grow things that I can cook and put on the table. So for me, that meant sacrificing um, garden space instead of planting out, you know, things like marigolds and flowers, which of course have their place in the garden as companion plants um, and just as pretty flowers, you know. But it really did mean that this season, I specifically set out to to grow things that you can cut and cook and put on a plate as a side dish instead of just herbs and tomatoes. So pick a percentage and stick to that, you know, write it down, create your steps to achieve that plan. Um, we'll be going into that after I share with you my other couple goals that I have for you guys. But pick something, you know, pick a percentage. If you're already growing half your vegetables, up it to 75% or 100%. Or decide that this is the year you're gonna grow all your own food or grow all your own herbs or even grow, you know, a cocktail garden or a tea garden or something, but set out to grow a percentage of something. That way you're actually getting something from the time that you spent putting in. All right, so the second goal is to grow three things you've never grown every season. So with that last goal, right, um, I'm definitely expanding and trying to grow all my own food. Um, and I actually did pretty well the last few seasons, but every season I have made it a point to add something new, whether it's a new variety of the same type of vegetable or if it is a new you know, type of vegetable altogether. Like behind me, you can see I am growing loofah. It is growing pretty well. Um, I did not know, well, I knew, let me take that back. I knew it would trellis, I didn't know it would trellis, up of the freaking windows but every season I have made it a point to grow new things and new varieties and just in you know introduce new things into the garden it's brought different kind of pollinators and they also teach you new things as a gardener my loofah over here just started sprouting these beautiful yellow flowers this morning um, I am going to prevent it from trellising up the side of the house because I would like to actually use it at some point in time and I am very short I cannot reach up there um, and plus that's why we built we built out trellises um, but another thing that I planted for the very first time this season was okra and I have had so many of these beautiful little flowers which by the way guys one of the best reasons to come out in the garden in the mornings because all the flowers are out and blooming um, but we have actually had quite a few 
pods of okra. Now this one I think is probably ready to pick. I have some more inside. Um, this one over here as well. Now this is something I've never grown. I've actually never seen how it grows, but it grows so well in the heat. I mean, we're in central Florida. It is like 95 degrees right now and it's like 9 a.m. This never skips a beat. You can see that, you know, it is getting a little tiny bit eaten by the pest over here. Um, if this would focus. Yeah, so you can see it has definitely some caterpillar and some cutworm damage, um, but it's not wilting, it's not anything. I mean, I am gonna have to, at some point in time, you know, like mulch or something down there um, or add some sort of live ground cover, but it really, like, it's done really well. You know, the beans and tomatoes, they get a little wilty sometimes in this high heat, but I mean, okra is just such a wonderful crop if you're growing in a very hot summer season. And the last thing that I decided to plant out this season for the very first time was cayenne peppers. Now, I know I've shared with you guys before, I cannot grow peppers to save the life of me, but that is not going to stop me from trying. And this garden, this season, I tried and tried and tried, and we have peppers for the very first time. So I've previously planted out bell peppers, um, but this season I planted out some cayenne peppers, and they grew. You can actually see here we have quite a few peppers. There's one, there's one. Um, there's a few more oh, back here, but we actually even have tons of them on the kitchen countertop And there's so many new little flowers coming out as well I mean if I wouldn't have tried to plant out a new variety of peppers I would have never been able to say I grow peppers now so to me that really is one of the absolute best goals that you can set for yourself as a gardener because if you are not growing and expanding and learning new things then really you're just staying the same and that's no fun at all all right so the next goal that i think that every gardener should have is to set systems in place that will take care of your garden for you when you are not here when you don't have the time because gardening does get tiresome um, i love gardening and being out here all the time but there's just days that i can't walk the garden in the morning there's days where you know the plants went without watering because we were out of town or we had something else to do so set up systems and the main system I'm talking about here is this one right behind me so as many of you know I set up a drip irrigation system um, last season and you can see the drip lines they are connected all of my raised beds are on these same drip lines it goes all the way down um, it goes all the way across the back end of the garden and comes back up here and it ends right in this garden bed right there that over here is the end of the entire drip line but you can see um, it has the drip lines and also if I can find it oh here we go it has like these little micro sprinkler emitter things down here um, that make sure that everything in the middle of the garden boxes are doing well as well they're getting watered and that is really saved I don't know how many hours this season in being able to take care of the garden um, and I, I do come out here and check it and I you know as you can see um, this one over here right now this, the timer is set to off because we got I don't know how many inches of rain yesterday um, and the same thing today I think it's gonna pour today as well um, and so I turn it off whenever I need to but when I don't need to turn it off I mean come on this just it's a lifesaver it really you know it really saves my butt sometimes when you know we're out of town or when I can't get to the garden or even when I'm just being lazy you know and I don't want to come out here um, first thing in the morning to walk the garden I know that my drip irrigation system is gonna water the plants at a certain time um, for a certain length of time and that allows me to sleep in or take the morning off or whatever it is and then just come check later on in the day so guys, I really do believe that setting systems in place for your garden is one of the absolute best things you can do. I mean, you can see how green my garden is this season. Um, I have had some issues with overwatering and definitely some challenges um, with the drip irrigation system when we first set it up. But once you get it under control, I mean, systems will save your life and save you so many hours. All right, so before we get to the things that every goal needs in order to be successful, I'm going to share with you my one last goal, um, which I think that every gardener should have, which is to grow a 100% organic garden. Now, I very well know that this is easier said than done um, because I have been growing an organic garden for the past several seasons, and there have been so many challenges to pest control, um, to disease control, and just making sure your garden actually produces. You know, it is really easy to just buy something at the store that is a one and done solution. Um, but at the end of the day, the reason that I garden, the reason I homestead is to provide a better quality of food for my family and for myself, um, for health reasons, for financial reasons, for just a whole bunch of different reasons. And I really don't want to take those same chemicals that the, you know, the grocery stores are putting in and using on their plants and put them on my plants, right? Like that's 
kind of defeating the purpose of spending this many hours and this much time and dedication to the garden. So one of my goals is to grow 100% organic. Um, I have been doing that and I think that everybody should do that. Now it is definitely not without its challenges like I said before. So I use neem oil for pest control. Um, I use diatomaceous earth. I use BT. And then a lot of the things that I've been learning to do really recently is to employ permaculture principles. So things like um, good bugs that will come in and eat the bad bugs, right? So you're looking for a parasitic wasp, ladybugs, things like that to destroy the caterpillars and the armyworms and you know anything that you don't want eating your plants. It's really good to have that balance, right? So permaculture principles is kind of my next focus in gardening to prevent me having to first of all go out and buy all of these very expensive type you know um, neem oil and all these things they're definitely not cheap and if I can use um, something natural then I would much rather do that um, but it also will save you know our family in the long run from having to eat those things that are covered in pesticides as well all right, so what does every goal need in order to be successful, right? Because a goal without a plan is really just a wish. And I really don't want to wish my garden into existence. I want to plan and make sure that I am able to accomplish these goals. So as many of you might know, I do work full time. I'm a project manager um, and project management is really a lot of goal setting. So in every project that I manage and the garden is no different, I use SMART goals. And SMART is an acronym that stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-based. So every single one of your goals, whether it has something to do with the garden or not, um, should be specific, right? You don't want to say, oh, I just want to build a garden. You want to say, I want to build this type of garden, um, which will get you to this outcome, right? I want to build a food producing vegetable garden. That is a specific goal. The next one is going to be measurable. Can you measure its success, right? Because at the end of the day, when you're saying, oh yeah, I accomplished that goal, how do you know you accomplished it? If you say I was able to grow, you know, all of my own herbs, well, did you have to buy herbs at the grocery store? If you didn't and you managed to grow all of them, that is a measurement of your goal. You can say I measured this in success. The next one is attainable, right? Are you able to attain this? Do you have space to grow a garden? Do you have space to grow all of your own food? Um, are you allowed to grow a garden? If this is something that is really, you know, not a possibility, you cannot attain this goal, then you are setting yourself up for failure. And at the same time, is it realistic? You know, you might be able to attain this, but for you personally, is it real that you're going to come out here and take care of your garden on a daily or weekly or whatever basis it is? I mean, is this goal that you're setting in place for yourself real for you? Um, for me, I have dedicated a lot of time to this garden, but there was a time where I was not really prepared to do that. So for me, that goal was not realistic back then. Now it is, and in the future, there might be other goals that are even more realistic. But for you right now, whatever it is your goal is going to be, is that a real possibility for you? And lastly, is your goal time-based, right? And by time-based, we mean, do you have a deadline on it? So if you decide, okay, I'm gonna grow all of my own herbs, okay, so by when? When are you gonna do this by? Are you gonna do it by the end of this year, the end of this month? Are you setting yourself a deadline? Because if you never set a deadline on that goal, it is gonna take you 20 or 30 years to grow a pot of herbs, and that's something you don't wanna do. So put a realistic timeline on it, you know, give yourself a deadline, um, not too early, right? You don't wanna say, I'm gonna grow an entire garden by next week, that is not realistic. Set a realistic time frame for that goal. For me, I gave myself a very realistic time frame of a year to set up 100% all organic um, systems in place and learn as I go. Now, that was a good amount of time for me because I didn't know um, all too much on specific organic methods. Um, I knew a lot about, you know, different types of organic and different, you know, all natural type of things, but I didn't know a whole bunch about each one of them. So I gave myself a lot of time to learn and then I gave myself time to implement it as well. So as creative as I like to think I am, um, I am a very analytical person and setting these goals really does help keep me on track um, and it also helps me measure you know, the fact that I was able to complete these things. I like setting these goals um, for everything I do but I specifically like setting them in the garden because it's so easy and so close to just reach over to that ripe tomato, pick it up and set it on the table for dinner or whatever it is I'm cooking that day. You know, these goals will really help you to attain whatever it is you're looking for. Um, start with these four that I've, you know, I personally think that every gardener should have. But, you know, if you have other ones, I'd love to hear them. Drop them in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.